Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Cliffhanger movie thoughts. So I would suggest that I believe Hal is his character name, you know, Michael Rooker would be prevented in the future from running and yelling at innocent people because every time he does so in this movie they get shot. You know, it's just one time, okay, you know, at least with that one, you know, with the two young people who are just, you know, extreme sports fanatics, you know, I could kind of see how he'd think that would help, and it does. The second time, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what you're expecting to, you know, accomplish there, Hal, you know, there, I, I think... I think at that point you should just, there should be a voice in your head when you ponder running, screaming towards someone innocent who might survive if you don't do so, that tells you, I can't let you do that, Hal. I, I just, I would think that that would help people survive in the future, you know, maybe quit the whole rescue business because you're a little bit bad at it. I had maybe sort of expected after the extreme sports fanatic gets back to you know, civilization that they actually send, you know, some kind of police something towards, you know, our main characters, but no. You know, I, I I guess the whole situation was really just about, you know, we really hope he lives, even though he doesn't even have a character name. I, I, I'm not sure I could pick his face out of a lineup. The other guy, maybe. I, I think it's, it's the, the, the hair and the teeth, you know, it, they're, they're, they're kind of distinct. But, yeah, you know, other than that, I... Yeah, I guess the one thing that did come out of the you know, Frank, I think his name was, getting shot was the knife being, you know, transferred onto Hal. I really think Hal, after, you know, Frank got shot, he really should have said, you know, in addition to saying, this man never hurt anybody. I, th I really think he should have added, sure, his art was bad, but still. And, you know, all of a sudden, when Hal is fighting the the goon, De Delmar, he turns into a soccer player. And he's like, for, for half a second, I forgot what movie I was watching, and I thought there was actually going to be a, a backstory, you know, some kind of motivation. You know, okay, I guess, you know, $30 million might be motivation, but if this guy was a successful soccer player, yeah, I, well, why is he robbing people? Why is, yeah, and, but, but no, it's just so that they could have him kicking Hal, and, and that's it, you know, I, yeah, and it's not enough that he, you know, not only does he get shot with a shotgun in his stomach, not only does he fall off a mountain. He gets shot with a shotgun in the stomach, then falls off a mountain. You know, I, I... Overkill? And speaking of overkill, how about when the African-American one beats the crap out of Stallone, and then after a while, Stallone just picks him up, shoves him straight up through, a stalactite, or maybe it's a stalagmite. I always get the two mixed up. Yeah. Again. One thing is lifting a human body, especially after you've taken a beating like that. Another thing is shoving this large, granted sharp, but still ice, you know, spike through a human body, as well as, you know, the clothing. But to lift up a human body 
and push it onto this spike. And note that it remains hanging there, you know. It, yeah, that, that... It also looked very... Excuse me, it, it kind of turned wrestler match there after a while. Excuse me, you know, the, the African American clearly had martial arts training. Some of Stallone's moves looked like something you'd see in a wrestling ring, really, but yeah. I didn't think there was really much of a point other than to, you know, when. I don't remember his name, Eric. You know, when Eric. When Lithgow shoots the female, you know, that really, that's just to get rid of another of them, as well as further establish that he's kind of a jerk. You know, and that's really all there is to it. You know, there's nothing else gained from that. Yeah, you know, okay, so she was a pilot. That was, that was hardly even that well established early. I believe she is the one flying the jet, but I didn't know that she was the only other pilot. You know, there... Yeah. Wasn't Delmar still alive at that point? You know, he could have also been a pilot. But, yeah, anyway. I love how they never actually react to Hal constantly, you know, breaking out of the, you know, he, he's just constantly yelling to people, warning them, and running off, and doing all this stuff, and they just never do anything. You know, when it's Stallone, they're like, okay, we'll take his jacket, and we'll put a rope on him. Hal, right after that, Hal yells up to Stallone. That's the first time. They don't take his jacket, they don't put a rope on him. They just keep letting him do this stuff, and, you know, at most, they're gonna bash him in the face afterwards, you know. Yeah, I... Yeah. And... I don't know, maybe it was just that one goon who was really stupid, but when Stallone is trying to get away, and he's shooting, I mean, one thing is that he's shooting. I'd personally wait for the money, you know, the, the case to be down by them before any shooting or any, you know, pulling of the rope. You know, if they pulled on the rope enough and Stallone let go, you know, if he just fell down with the rope and he left the suitcase up there, they'd still have to get up and get the suitcase. You know, what, what would they have gotten out of it? But, yeah, so... The guy, the goon, is shooting at him, and then he starts firing, you know, these, the, the grenade launcher, the under, yeah, the, the grenade launcher on the rifle, I believe it is, and he causes an avalanche, and I'm not sure the other criminals even comment on it, and it's like, do you not know what, what, you know, it's, it's, it's snow. You're in the mountains. Loud noises. What did you think was going to happen? Y you know, he's... Yeah, I, I guess he's just that determined to get, you know, rid of Stallone. And, yeah. And apparently no longer caring about the money again. You know, it, it would seem that there's a greater risk of them you know, affecting the money, then, yeah. I do like that after they take his jacket away, we do have, you know, that later he's seen, you know, shaking, you know, when he gets into the, the building, you know, because, again, one thing is that, you know, Stallone is climbing on these mountains. That alone would make for, you know, thrilling entertainment. That alone is dangerous. He's also doing it without any equipment after that point. And he doesn't have a freaking jacket. You know, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. They just 
keep throwing the stuff at, but, but yeah, you know. One thing I do think, but I could be wrong, that this is actually the first of those films to really have this, you know, mountain climbing as a major, you know, this is one of those films that people actually remember. You know, same as how Die Hard, you know, afterwards they've been kind of done to death, especially the Die Hard formula. But, you know, I believe both are the, the first of their kind, and other than that it's the first, it's also just a really good execution of this kind of idea, you know, they do think of a lot of really cool things. You know, when Stallone and that goon are fighting, you know, with the the night vision goggles, and Stallone blinds him with a flare, which in and of itself, it's, that's already clever. And then they're struggling, and they slide down, and they're fighting as they're sliding down. Again, just them sliding down, that that alone would be exciting. But they're fighting, so it's kind of... You know, if they keep fighting, they're both going to go over, you know, eventually. And, you know, Stallone shows that other dude's face in, which is going to, that's going to really hurt, you know. And just the whole thing. And, you know, the bridge, which is tripwired to explode. How, why did they bring that up there, the, the thieves? Did they expect to need tripwires, detonators, and explosives? when carrying out an in-air heist, I, I, I don't follow. I, I guess they were just really... Yeah, I, I guess they just really wanted to be prepared for whatever they might run into. I'm also not entirely sure the plan would have worked all that well to begin with. They had five minutes to send down the three suitcases. Even if they only send them one at a time, I guess part of the problem is that they're sending all three. And the, you know, the gunshots. But if they had sent them one at a time, it would have to go really fast, or they'd have to be sent in, you know, in close succession. Or, quick succession, whatever. Or it, you know, they'd, there'd still be one suitcase on it when you know, the plane blew up. I'm also quite impressed with the dedication of the one surviving agent that he doesn't look for a parachute after shooting, you know, that he just, yeah, he's compelled to just focus on trying to shoot them instead of trying to save his own life. That's, that's admirable. I like that, you know, Stallone put, set up a trap for, you know, the agent's mustache and, you know, with the blood and the tracks and the whole thing, and you could kind of tell, you know, that this is going to be a trap, you know, and then he pulls him in, and then, you know, he actually gets himself almost killed by getting down to the water, and then he uses a gun was that a re regular, just, you know, handgun? How did it survive the water and the cold? And the cold water? Um, I'm also not entirely sure where he got it, but uh, maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me not noticing or remembering properly. But yeah, I, I'm not entirely clear on how he managed to. And why does he wait until the very last second other than, you know, Hollywood? I gotta love how when the guns need to hit, they do, and when they really need not to, they don't. You know, like, from the one plane in the air to the other plane also in the air, with a submachine gun, this guy who's been shot and appeared to be dead, you know, so he must be close, or mustache must be a crappy shot, I'm not sure exactly which it is, he manages to take the other plane out and, you know, shoot out some of the windows and everything. And, you know, Hal, with the shotgun, manages to 
actually hit the chopper, you know, not disable it like that, but still hit it several times with a shotgun at that distance, you know, uh, moving target, no less, and yet when the bad guys are armed with assault rifles and they're within the range where such a weapon should be quite accurate and they're shooting at Stallone and company and, you know, no such luck. Oh, wait, he does actually take one hit, doesn't he? You know, to, to the, like, the shoulder or something. No, wait, that's the, the guy with the parachute. I'm also not entirely sure how that happened, especially with, you know, the parachute being completely fine, which it appeared to be, but whatever. Another situation I kind of like, you know, I like how they suddenly had to go through a cave, you know, and the whole, and, and the bats, you know, and that sort of situation and the 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 final scenario with the helicopter and the hostage and he has you know he he connects you know, and that's that's when you finally see they had handcuffs the entire time or maybe those were in the chopper but whatever they actually do handcuff you know the the chick and you're just like, why didn't they put anything on? Even if they didn't have handcuffs, rope, something, you know, train a gun on him at all times with Hal, but whatever. And, you know, so he, Stallone links the, the helicopter to that railing, and you're thinking, ah, the, you know, the helicopter's gonna be pulled down and just crash and explode in a giant fireball, and that is what eventually happens. But the railing actually connects to the rope ladder, which I didn't, I don't know, maybe that was established, but I didn't notice it. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, that's actually a really clever thing, because it really works. And it makes sense, you know. And again, we have this elaborate situation, which is really exciting. And, you know, the two of them are fighting on the helicopter, which is gonna crash at any moment, and, you know, Stallone has to get clear of, you know, and actually climb up without the rope ladder eventually, and just that whole thing really smartly done, you know, very, very exciting, and just a lot of fun to watch. But yeah, I, I did think that the government agent showed up to the party a bit late. You know, I, I guess we, you know, we had to have the heroes do their heroic thing, but it's almost like they didn't need to be in the movie. They were just really, you know, they just need to show up at the very last moment and be able to send a rescue chopper so that we have some plausible explanation for how they get away from where they are, but other than that, you know, Traxler and company really didn't need to be in the movie much at all. I, I have no idea why they didn't get there in time, because they didn't have the tracking device. If they were really far away, couldn't they have sent another chopper that was closer by? I, yeah, I, that's, that's something that really confuses me, how they couldn't have other, you know, law officials sent to the mountain and everything, but, yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.